four Gospels because they had Thank canonized you. those four Gospels. Thank and Muhammad you. said, Thank judge you. by you. that. Okay, I want the okay. audience to hear what Manu just said. Manu just admit, historically, the Gospel that the Quran is referring to happens to be the four Gospels because it was canonized. Notice what 547 and 7157 did not say. It, don't, it did not say, your Gospel is partially correct. Your gospel contains contradictions. It says, your gospel has guidance and light, judge by it. Now, Manu, can you explain to the audience, why is your prophet telling Christians to judge by gospels that are not the gospel of Christ, but corruptions? What kind of guidance can they contain, and what kind of God would do this? Can you answer that one before I go to 279? He says, if you read it in Arabic also, and you also realize that it's the translation also says that, in it is God. Read the Arabic for me, it Manu. Say the whole thing is a guidance. It okay, no, wrong, that. Manu. It doesn't say part of it is a guidance. In it, just like the Quran, in it is guidance and light. No, sorry, that doesn't work, Manu. Read the Arabic for me. Since you say read the Arabic, read it for me. I have to get to that. Uh, I wasn't on that chapter. Uh, okay. I wasn't on that chapter. But, but now uh, let me address but... 279. Since you just admit for the audience, and I want the audience to repeat what Manu just admit. I said that the gospel that the Christians would have had at the time of Muhammad, that Muhammad appeals to, would be the gospels of the New Testament. You heard it from a Muslim, he had to admit that. Thank you, Manu. Now let me look at chapter 2, verses 75 to 79. I had actually gone through 275, 79 a while back with Manu, and I thought that Manu had heard my response, and even if he didn't accept it, at least come up with a rebuttal. He simply repeated the same argument that's been refuted with no rebuttal to my response. Now let me read what he quoted, and then I'm going to read it in context. Let me read what he quoted. This is chapter 2, verse 75 to 79, specifically verse 79. This is what he referred to, but I'm going to give him the context, because he didn't give us the context. And then I'm going to show that the Quran says the Quran is corrupt by his logic. Okay, 279, let me read that. Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands, and then say this is from Allah, to purchase with a little price. Woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for, what, for that that they... Uh, they earned thereby. He's saying, see, Quran is acknowledging. Jews were writing books that were not from God, and this is your Bible. Number one, let's read the context to see which Jews does the Quran have in mind. All Jews everywhere? The Jews at Jesus' time? The Jews that were living in Iraq far away from Muhammad? Or is the passage speaking of a particular group of Jews at a particular location at a particular time? Let's read. Chapter 2, verses 75 to 79. Do you covet that they believe in your religion in spite of the fact that a party of them, go read the commentators, they'll tell you this is the Jews, used to hear the word of Allah, the Torah in parentheses, then they used to change it knowingly after they understood it. Did you catch it? Did it say all of them or a party of them? See, this is why Muslims don't read even the Quran carefully. A party, a specific group did this. So even if Manu is right that this is showing that the Jews corrupted the Torah, it's speaking of one particular group at a particular location at a particular time. What do you do with all the other Jews and the Christians who also had the Old Testament who would not allow the Jews to corrupt their copies of the Old Testament? What do you do with that, Manu? Right. Let me, oh, oh, that's up to you. Yeah. Do we I have to cut it short? More callers, all right. But, um, but, Manu, thank you. We, we, we have to move on. We were, we've got the board lit up with people okay. who are calling in. So, uh, well, that's my point, Claire. I just want to make sure you understood. It's speaking of a particular group yes. at a particular time that supposedly wrote a book. And notice it didn't say corrupted their book, wrote some other book. How do you know that it's not referring to the Talmud, not the Bible? Because at that time, the Jews were also reading the Talmud and claiming it was revelation from God. Why do you automatically assume it must be the Bible? Especially when there are other verses that say that the Christians also had the Torah. And which Christian would agree with a Jew? Okay, let's corrupt the Torah. It takes a, a, a more faith to believe in his distortion of the Quran than allowing the Quran to speak for itself. Okay. All right. We have our next caller, I believe, is Danny. Danny, you're on Jesus or Muhammad? Danny boy. Okay. I'm sorry. We have Matthew. Matthew, you are on Jesus or Muhammad. There's Hello. no song with Matthew in it. Sorry. Hello? Hello, Hi, Matthew. Matthew. Hi, hi guys. Um, hi, brother Sam. Hi, brother David. How are you, Matthew? Hello, <laughs> sister. You have Hello. a great name. So, I'm so happy to see you guys in this program. You guys don't know what wonderful work you guys are doing. 
I really praying for you guys pretty much every day. And of course, Amen. We need uh, it, brother. brother David. You know, I'm I'm happy to see you in the program. You know, yeah. I'm you know what I'm talking about. Like what happened? You know. You mean, <laughs> that's you mean it. But anyway, um, I have jail. A, yeah. uh, eating turkey sandwiches. Position. And um, then I have a question. My right, brother. position is actually you no. Know, the problem with the Christians because they don't know exactly what's in the in the Quran and uh, and what is it actually written. So because because of their lack of knowledge. They're always having a trouble to answer the Muslim questions. So it, this show is very, very wonderful, fantastic. But if you don't mind, please start some kind of short course, which is like kind of some kind of online course. Oh, to teach Christians? People from different countries can come to this, uh, you know, come and uh, they can learn about this thing. That okay. is my humble request and suggestion. Praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, my question actually, sorry, I'm taking time, but sorry. My question is like, and I don't have any problem that my Bible is true. There is no no distortion, no corruption. But over and over and again, even from Manu, he keep asking, the, he's saying that like the Bible is distorted, it's corrupted, and there is no problem. And, and brother um, Sam was saying, you know, he was even pointing out from uh, um, uh, from the from the Quran, you know, because uh, Muhammad was saying, you know, go on and search in uh, in Gospel and yeah. Torah. Right. So the the problem is, then they say that oh. The, the Bible you have at this time is corrupted. So my question, like, actually you addressed that, but my question is like, how can we prove historically the Bible we have in our hand, which was the same as in the, the time of Muhammad and even before the time of Muhammad? Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good that's question. question. So how can we prove let that? Me, yeah, let me a good really question, let fast that answer it, and then maybe David wants to add something. Uh, if you notice, we keep referring to manuscript evidence. With the Greek New Testament alone, we have over 5,700 copies in the Greek, Koine Greek. Obviously, not all of these are complete copies. Some are fragmentary. And we have, in fact, at least 12 manuscripts of the New Testament, fragmentary manuscripts that come within the first 100 years of the writing of the Gospel of John, which is believed to be the last Gospel written. So the manuscript evidence. We have, so much, we have a plethora of manuscript evidence for the New Testament in Greek, if you actually tally all the number of manuscripts we have for the Bible, specifically in the New Testament, in all the various languages, it's over 25,000 manuscripts. And that's no exaggeration. So it's the manuscript tradition that we have preserved by the grace of God that tells us what the Bible looked like before Muhammad, during Muhammad, and after Muhammad. So because of that textual tradition, that rich textual tradition, there can be no doubt that what they had at the time Muhammad is what we have today. In fact, Manu admit that. Did you hear what Manu said? Oh, yeah, it was yeah, the four Gospels. He has to admit it on historical grounds. Now, if Dave wants to add something, because yeah. I want to add something else to Manu, where he says, I have no problem with the Torah. You have a lot of problems with the Torah, but I'll say that after this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're, you're on. No, no, I'll add briefly that uh, there, are, there are a couple of components when we exam when we, if we want to examine the textual history of the Bible. There, there's, there are a couple of components. One is the manuscript tradition. So we look at the manuscript tradition, and... If what Muslims are saying is correct, so Muslims tell us, ah, your Bible is corrupt. Well, as we go back through time, we find earlier and earlier manuscripts. As we examine these earlier and earlier manuscripts, we should eventually get to something that lines up with Islam or something that's closer to Islam or something that starts approaching Islam, uh, but that never happens. In other words, uh, it made sense a couple hundred years ago for Muslims to say, ah, your Bible is corrupted. If they're in an area where the earliest manuscript of the Bible is, let's say, from the 9th century. So you've got a, a 9th century Bible manuscript, and your Muslim friend says, ah, that's, that, that's corrupted. That's corrupted. Well, it's possible, and future investigation will show whether the Muslim is correct. So then archaeologists go out, and they discover uh, manuscripts from the, the 8th century, and the 7th century, and the 6th century. As we go back in time, we should get closer and closer and closer to a manuscript that lines up with Islam. But all we ever find as we go back earlier and earlier and earlier is that the manuscripts confirm what we have today. That's all we ever find. So you can find word differences, spelling differences, things like that. But what you never find is Jesus just claimed to be a prophet. Jesus didn't die on the cross. Jesus never claimed to be divine. That's what you never find. All you ever find, no matter how far back you go, is what Christians are, pro are proclaiming today. So... Examining the textual history of the Bible, that's one component, and that confirms our view. But there's another component, I would say it's a theological component. What Muslims are telling us is that God delivered a book, and then man destroyed the work of God. That's what they're telling us. According to the Quran, Surah 3, 3 through 4, the Injil, 
was given as a guidance for mankind. God delivered it as a guidance for mankind. This gospel, this Injil, was preserved all the way down to the time of Muhammad. So for six centuries, this message was preserved, and yet we have no record of it existing. If it's so, in, in other words, if it's different from the gospel we have today, we have no record of it. Show me a gospel anywhere from the first six centuries of Christianity that lines up with Islam. You won't find it. Yeah. Now, so what Muslims are telling me is God gives a book to humanity, and he cannot protect it. He just can't do it. Now, imagine that. I mean, it, it, 